Welcome to Rambam in depth. Today we're going to be discussing the Rambam's Shita in Hilchas Isuri Bia, Perik Yud Gimel, Halacha Zayin. The Rambam is talking about conversion, a gerus of a cotton. He says the following: Ger cotton makbilun eisay al das bezdin shuschusilai. That a ger cotton you can table him, but the Bezdin is the one responsible because it's a schus for him. You can do something favorable for a person without their consent, and it's as if the person himself did it. So the child is considered converted. The Magid Mishnah says this is a Gemara in Ksubis. Amar of Huna, Ger Katan, Matbil, and Eisal Das Bezdin, the Schusulai. Okay, that's exactly the same as the Rambam, word for word from the Gemara. But then, the Magad Mishnah adds that the Gemara has more to say. Omar Rab Yosef, he says, "Ve'im higdilo yechelun limchais." Rab Yosef says that when they become adults, they could protest it. Now the Rambam, the Magad Mishnah asks, doesn't mention this. The Rif as well doesn't mention it. Then he says, "Acha kach matzasi." I found that the Rambam does mention it in Hilchus Molochim, in Perik Yud, in Hilchus Molochim. So the question is, why does the Rambam write this din in Hilchus Molochim, where he talks about the dinim of Bnei Neach, the chayuvim, the obligations of a Bnei Neach, and not mention it here, where he's talking about the laws of Gerus? So there's a Chassam Sefer in Yeridea who explains it as follows. He says, this din, and there's a Machlekes, ask him about this, but the Chassam Seber says this is what the Rambam is trying to tell us. That this din, that they could be meicha, they could protest, even though they went through Geras when they were a child, and the Geras was valid, they could protest it and revert to their non-Jewish status. That's only true if the Geir comes on his own accord. Because then, the schus, the fact that it's favorable for him, is not so uh, absolute. So when he protests it, that proves that it really wasn't a positive thing for him. And only because it was positive did we consider this gerus to be valid. But what happens if he comes with his mother or with his father? So he's not coming to live in an isolated state of existence where he doesn't have the support. But he has the support. His father and mother or one or the other are bringing him or both. In that case, you can't be meicha. You can't protest. It's a done deal. That's what the Chassam Sefer says. And many paskim, paskim like the Chassam Sefer, that if a ger, cotton, is brought by one of his parents, that cannot be changed after bar mitzvah. Okay, so that's the Chassam Sefer's approach. There's a tshuva from Rabbi Tzal Jolti. He was the chief rabbi of Yerushalayim, the mechaber of the Sefer, Mishnas Yaivetz. And he has a different approach, which goes to the fundamental understanding of what entails gerus. And he says like this, he tries to show that there's a machlekes. The Rambam says that when a ger cotton, when a ger, not just a ger cotton, he needs, of course, mila, he needs tevila, but he also needs to be told about the mitzvahs. He has to be kabbalah sa mitzvahs. The question is, what happens if there was no Kabbalah Samitzvahs? Is the Geirus valid or not? So the Bach tries to be Medayik from the Rambam that he holds that L'Chathchila you need Kabbalah Samitzvahs. But if you didn't have Kabbalah Samitzvahs, it's also a good Geirus. Other Rishonim clearly disagree with that. But that's how the Bach understands the Rambam. The Chem de Shleima says no. If you look carefully what the Rambam says, he's not talking about Kabbalah Samitzvahs, that you can get away without Kabbalah Samitzvahs. He's talking about Heidah Samitzvahs. In addition to the fact that a Geir has to accept the mitzvahs, they also have to tell him about the mitzvahs, tell him the strict mitzvahs, the punishment, the rewards, and so on. If they omitted that part, it's not Miyakiv, but Yavad, it's good. But if you're missing the Kabbalah Samitzvahs, See, that is absolutely not a valid gerus. There's a Rambam where he talks about 
that the gerus, the tefillah, the immersion in the mikveh has to be under the supervision of a bezdin. But the Raman doesn't mention anything. Why? Because it says mishpat. It's like a civil case that has to be done by a bezdin. It has to be done during the day. But the Raman doesn't mention anything about Kabbalah Samitzvahs, that that has to be done un- under the direction of a bezdin. So here again, we see that the Bach seems to be right in his understanding of the Rambam, that the Rambam does not consider Kabbalah Samitzvahs to be an integral part of the Gerus. It's required L'Chadchila, but not B'Diavad. So Rabbi Jolti says no. On the contrary, the Rambam considers Kabbalah Samitzvahs to be more important than Mila Utvila. And he says like this, Gerus has to be divided into two, two parts. One part of Gerus is the Maisa HaGerus, the act that you have to go through to make the Gerus valid. That is Mila Utvila. But then there's the Mahus of Gerus. What is the essence of Gerus? The essence of Gerus is that it becomes part of the Jewish people. Imagine if a prospective Ger comes to the Bezdin and says, you know what? I want to become a Ger, but I don't want to become part of the Jewish people. Obviously, then you don't want to be a Ger. It's like someone says, I want to keep Shabbos, but I want to do all the Malachas. Then you, then you don't want to keep Shabbos. You can't have both at the same time. So Gerus, by definition, means accepting Torah mitzvahs, because that's the definition of being a Jew. A Jew has the yoke of Torah mitzvahs. Now, of course, there are Jews who have the yoke, but they don't follow it. But that doesn't mean they don't have the yoke. If someone says, I'm coming to become a Ger without accepting that yoke, he is not interested in Gerus. He's using words, but the words are meaningless. Once a person is sincere that he wants to be a Jew with all that which being a Jew entails, then there's a Maisa Gerus, there's an act, there's a judicial act that you have to go through, Mila Utfila, and that has to be done in front of a Bezdin. So according to the Rambam, the truth is that without Kabbalah's HaMitzvahs, there's no Gerus. The Gerus doesn't begin. Now, let's take a cotton. A cotton doesn't have Kabbalah's HaMitzvahs. So there's a Teisvahs in Sanhedrin, from which we can see that Teisvah holds that Kabbalah Samitzvah is one of three aspects of the Maisa Hagerus. Because Teisvah explains, how does it work when a cotton is Nizgayer? There's Mila, there's Tvila, but there's no Kabbalah Samitzvah. So he says, that's the whole idea. Is that when he becomes an adult, he could be Meicha. What, what, is it, what is the point of being Meicha? That shows that if he's not Meicha, then he's Mechabal the Mitzvah. And Rabbi Jolti explains, just like Mila or Tefillah, you don't do them simultaneously. The Mila takes place, and you wait to the healing, and then you do the Tefillah. And it doesn't negate the Mila. You don't say, well, the Mila was worthless. He wasn't a, a, a Geir. No, part of Geirus requires Mila. That's Mila L'Shem Geirus. Then you wait, and you do Tefillah. And then, in the case of a cotton, you wait a little longer until it becomes Bar Mitzvah. And then he accepts Teru Mitzvahs. In other words, according to Teisvahs, the whole process of of a ger cotton is not that we're skipping over anything. We're not skipping over anything. It's mila tefillah, which are tentative, and then it's followed by kabbalah samitzus when he becomes a mitzvah. That's the shita of teisvus, because teisvus holds that kabbalah samitzus is part of a continuum. Mila, Tfila, Kabbalah, Samitzvah. And of course, the kabbalah samitzus could take place before the mila and Tfila, but even when it didn't, it takes effect when he becomes a Godel. The Rambam, he says, no, doesn't learn like that. That the Kabbalah Samitzvah is there when he's a cotton, even though there's no Kabbalah Samitzvah. So he explains that we are Zeicha for him. It's as if the Bezdin is Mechabal the Mitzvah for him. That needs more Hezber. He doesn't go into explaining it, but that's something. That's a point that he makes. And therefore, when he is Meicha later, it has nothing to do with the Gerus. That's not part of Gerus that he's not Meicha. Gerus was already finished with the Mila Utvila. It's just that there's a way that you can undo the, the Gerus, Mila Mafreya. You show that it was never a good Gerus. When? When he shows that he wasn't a schus for him because he's Meicha. He protested. That has nothing to do with Gerus. As far as Gerus is concerned, Gerus was completed already when he was a cotton. You're talking about how a person who was considered to be a Ben Yisrael, how we could revert to being a Ben Nayach, 
that's when he's meicha. So that's why Rabbi Shalta explains he doesn't mention that in Hilchas Yisurei Bia where he talks about the laws of Geros because it's nothing to do with Geros. Geros is complete milot tefila al das bezdin because it's a schus. But in the laws of Bnei Neach, where he talks about the difference between a Ben Yisrael and a Ben Neach, there he's saying there's a way that a Ben Yisrael, or who we accepted as a Ben Yisrael initially, reverts to being a Ben Neach. That belongs there when he's Meicha. That explains why the Rambam leaves it, omits it here in Hilchas Yisrael